Hello Realm Walkers, hope all is well. In Affliction Games has released Update 0.2 for Nightingale, which holds numerous changes for the game, including new weapons, quests, and huge changes to crafting and material attributes. I've put a link to the update notes in the description below should you wish to read it. Anyway, let's get into it. Up first are a number of art and visual updates which see improvements to various animations for creatures, players, weapons, and tools. They've also updated the art for a number of ingredients including tomatoes, carrots, wheat, oats, and potatoes. They've also updated audio and sound effects including full voiceover work for Nellie Bly, who is the critical quest NPC. Among the adjustments also include pain emote sounds and combat music trigger times. Up next they make a quick tweak to building costs, which means there's going to be a whole lot less grind to make some of those spectacular buildings. For example, sourcing ceramic was a huge pain point for many players, and this change should make things a hundred times easier. One of the chunkier parts of this update pertains to combat. They've added three new weapons, the blunderbuss, throwing knives, and grenade satchels. All of these should provide more tactical opportunities in battle, especially given the new enemies, which we'll get into later. Inflection has also made some updates to dodge. Previously, only one-handed weapons were able to grant dodge. Now you can do it at any time with any weapon. As a result, sickles, hunting knives, and hammers now have unique abilities. Sickles have an AoE boomerang attack, hunting knives can parry, and hammers have a devastating flurry of blows. And as previously mentioned, there are new bound enemies to contend with. The Aegis and the Mortar. The Aegis is basically a walking tank with two massive shields, and it promises to be really tough to defeat. Meanwhile, the Mortar can lob massive explosive rounds from a distance, which leave AoE Miasma in their wake. When paired, these two are going to be a real tough encounter to overcome. And because the Mortar is in the game, that means the Bound Grenadier's weapon is kind of redundant. And so they've changed that too. So they've made their throwables now this kind of a basic grenade which have a timer before they explode, and they don't leave with a miasma like before. And that should make them much easier to deal with, especially in extreme difficulty at lower levels. Bound lamplighters are now ranged units. Previously they would run up to you and melee along with the others and just smack you in the face. Now they'll be really annoying from a distance. Bound dark weavers now work quite differently from before and will require some tactical maneuvering and probably even spellcasting to overcome them and their minions. Bound Hexans should now be a little closer to the ground and their teleport has been tweaked a little bit, which means they should be a lot easier to deal with in combat. They also note that Elite minions have also been tweaked, which means enemies like the Elite Knight will be harder to deal with. Other changes to enemies include Bound with head or face gear now do a little bit more damage, while all Bound minions in general have less health. Overall creature changes include the fact that they can take fall damage, and also hitting any taunted creatures will cancel that taunt. There have also been some NPC and quest changes, including some much needed companion commands. This is a huge sigh of relief for every player in the game. Companions now have behavioral toggles which allow you to fine tune what you want them to do. And a couple of new NPCs have been added to the game. They provide new quest lines for the new weapons. In addition, Aurelio's quest line has been updated to be generally better. And those who killed their targets for Nellie Bly's questline can now go back to Frankenstein, Ludivine, and Danu to complete theirs. Up next are some big crafting and resource changes. Almost all of these are amazing, including the ability to craft from storage. Although there's a 12 meter radius for said crafting, that's still a good amount of room. This equals to 3 floor tiles in length. Crafting stations now also have crafting queues, which is really really nice to have. I know, I'll be using that all the time while cooking all kinds of delicious meals. One of the big updates to crafting is the fact that all resource attributes now apply to the final product. For example, hats used to have only health, melee damage, and range damage. If you use materials that include elemental resistance, those attributes will now apply to the hat. This single update absolutely changes the crafting game for the better, because now we can craft tools and outfits for specialized activities more than ever. If we want stealth suits, we can, or crit suits, or vault run suits. You get the idea. Speaking of attributes, plenty of changes have been made there as well. Inflection has changed and consolidated a bunch of attributes, which makes crafting a lot less complicated. And exploring too. For example, heat, 
cold, blight, and wet resistance are now just simply environmental resistance. Other attributes have been removed, such as stamina efficiency, blocking efficiency, strength, fishing, and range. Instead, certain items and tools have these abilities inherently, so better fishing rods will actually be better at fishing. Awesome! Attribute stacking has also made a return where using the same material and recipe will again multiply its effects. But I don't think this is a good thing, to be perfectly honest. Dave mentioned that stacking limits creativity and experimentation, and I agree. When they first removed it, I experimented like crazy with cooking, and found the experience to be really, really rewarding, to be perfectly honest. Putting it back kind of takes that away from players. But thankfully there will be soft and hard caps implemented in the future that will limit the benefits of attribute stacking. So hopefully this still allows your creativity to flourish. Now onto the user interface and user experience changes. Mostly they added some action items in the HUD for the new weapons and abilities that players now have, such as Universal Dodge. The UI itself has been revamped a bit, not just to add more polish but to make it more intuitive and interactive. I've noticed that it certainly looks much, much cleaner and more decorative than before. They've also updated the icons for numerous items in the game, replacing the old placeholder. There are other miscellaneous changes they've added to the game, including performance improvements, graphics presets, more realm points of interest, what resource nodes Carnut can respawn, and so on. A big change is the ability to purchase recipes and items from essence traders that you've already visited. All you gotta do now is open up the guidebook, Scroll down to that essence trader and buy the stuff right from their shop. And you don't have to open up a realm just to get that one recipe you forgot to purchase way long ago. Now, onto the bug fixes section of the update. Inflection has worked to fix a number of client side crashes and server side disconnects, which is always welcome to see. Although, honestly, it'd be nice if they mentioned how many kinds of crashes and disconnects they fixed and what's still left in the table so we know how to work around them. They've also fixed some art and visual bugs, including invisible structures, outfit clipping, and other environmental art issues. There was also a fix for the dry fire sound effect for some guns, though I personally didn't experience these, probably because I don't really use guns all that often. Among the building bug fixes include campfires no longer having negative traits, which is awesome, the torch recipe only making one instead of three, which I thought was actually a feature, but probably the most important one is that structure counts now should be showing properly. This one's going to make a ton of people happy, that's for sure. A number of NPC bug fixes have also been implemented, such as that pesky floating climbing pick bug. Like if you equipped your follower with climbing picks, you'll probably have noticed that they've left one of their picks hanging in the air, which is pretty damn funny. But a bigger fix is where Frankenstein will now accept quest materials above tier 1. Huge sigh of relief here for extreme difficulty players because tier 1 materials won't drop in their realms. Of course, there's still the problem of Ludovine St. Clair's quest needing a number of curative potions, which need tier 1 swamp fiber. So hopefully they fix this one in the future, if it isn't already fixed in this one. Inflection has also added modeled skin to the character creator, so anyone who wants that can apply it. They've also fixed some resource bugs, such as etched ingots not being able to be used in blueprints, and animal fiber not being able to be turned into refined fiber. Also, refinement time has been tweaked for a bunch of recipes too. User interface and user experience bug fixes are up next, including one that really, really bugged me, which was potions and food that are equipped in your quick bar were being put into storage if you use the equivalent button. They should now stay right where they are. Some fixes were made to the Settler Eminent Minor Realm card. It now makes plants grow faster rather than slower. And also, the card itself has been updated. Finally, Inflection made some miscellaneous bug fixes, which include the super annoying issue where rain wouldn't fully water your farm plots. This is so nice, I just, I can't wait to actually go back and farm. But there are actually, there are some other great fixes in there too, like the escape button now should work more consistently, some achievements should now fire off properly, and enemies should now spawn properly inside of vaults, which is awesome. The vast majority of these fixes and changes are really, really good in my opinion. But what are your thoughts? Which changes do you like best? Which ones do you think are like, meh? Let us know down in the comments. In any case, I'll see you out in the Feywilds. Peace.